Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life, and this is part two, the continuation of the Uncarry event that T-Mobile hosted today. And as you can see on the screen, this is how the event started. T-Mobile posted their coverage map in the background, and this is their end of year predictions for 2017 on where their coverage will be. If you look very closely, this looks almost identical to Verizon's current coverage map as of Q3 2016. Now, I've been already emailing a lot of people, reading different tech blogs, and a lot of people are saying this is unbelievable, this is unreal, this can't happen, there's no way. And in my opinion, I'm going to say yes, just based on the fact of what you know T-Mobile has done in the past, I'm going to say yes, they're going to be able to claim the amount of pops that Verizon covers and square miles of LTE. But if anything, like most of their coverage expansion has been, it will be poor quality with large site spacing. So what I mean by that is T-Mobile can add a tower on a highway and let's just say they put band 12 on it. They're going to you know, stretch band 12 as far as it can go until they add another tower. Or if that tower is already there, they're going to make sure that signal reaches as far as it can go to that next tower. What does that mean? As soon as you move further and further from that new tower, your your signal is going to get, you know, worse. Your speeds are going to go slower. Call quality is going to be poor. So that is how they're adding current coverage expansion and not densifying it. Verizon is currently densifying the network coverage. So they're adding additional sites. You know, they're doing small sales. They're doing what's necessary for you not to experience their poor quality. But this is how Verizon also added network coverage. Tower spacing, just Verizon had band 13 at a higher bandwidth. So you didn't notice it as much as you will on T-Mobile. So T-Mobile has to also densify in the future to be able to keep, you know, poor quality from happening and having these uh, tower spacing issues. So as I continue here, as you can see, they did post a comparison map of their end of year 2007 coverage to um, Verizon current coverage map. And as you can see, it looks very identical, and even in certain areas, T-Mobile looks to cover better than Verizon. So, don't get me wrong, T-Mobile is a great company, but they have always in the past been able to oversell the network, and a lot of customers have been buying into it, and they have been switching, as you know, as you saw in my last video. But this time, they're doing it more aggressively than ever. I mean, they're claiming complete network parity with Verizon LTE of square miles that they will cover the same as Verizon and pops of LTE at 320 million with this new plan I mean this is going to cause additional growth as we all know people are going to are going to keep coming in they're going to continue the momentum throughout 2017 so this is really good for T-Mobile you know this will allow them to uh, keep shareholders happy you know keep their stock going up keep everyone motivated so this is really good uh, you know i like the approach but i think in the future they're going to have to add you know densification to their coverage you know add it add additional sites small cells which i'm sure is coming but in the future they're going to have to set a budget aside strictly for that so definitely good news though that somebody is challenging verizon and, you know, T-Mobile is doing it full effect, very aggressive. So uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good for us consumers. But if you go on the T-Mobile.com website and you actually zoom in on the map, then you're going to see what I'm talking about as far as fair LTE signal, even still roaming in certain areas. So, you know, if you want to look at your area, go to T-Mobile.com, type in the zip code and then zoom in. And then you're actually going to get more of an idea what coverage is really like instead of just looking. If you look at it zoomed out, it's going to look excellent as you see here. 
So just make sure you zoom in so you can actually get a get a real world idea of what coverage is actually like. So definitely. So the next topic, I, I told you I watched the whole um, whole event. Um, you know, I spaced out on a few sections because I was probably texting or emailing. So I, I missed maybe a little bit, but I caught the last question that was asked. It was very technical. A lot of people didn't know what they were talking about, but it was a network question that was asked to Nebel Ray, and it had to do with the gigabit speeds. So as you can see on this screen here, T-Mobile is currently um, switching out the Ericsson Air 21 with the new Air 32s, which those are supposed to be more efficient, you know, cover better, give better signal reception, all that good stuff. So T-Mobile is really, you know, doing it in um, really, really fast and quick. I think it's 200 sites in Los Angeles and like 300 sites in New York. And the question was asked, it was actually, it was a very good question. They, they, they were asking that, well, Ray, well, how are you going to achieve these gigabit speeds, you know, when you don't have certain markets, don't have slices of 20 megahertz and, you know, your LTE 5 gigahertz spectrum is still not available yet and the 600 megahertz spectrum is not available and they really just bombed Neville Ray. And this is what he said, and I'm going to just simplify this for you guys. Gigabit speeds can only be achieved in markets that have 100 megahertz spectrum. So you have to have 50 megahertz spectrum dedicated to downlink in order for you to achieve gigabit speeds, including the 256 QAMs and 4x4 MIMO all combined into carry aggregation. So, of course, as I've mentioned already, you will need a new phone to be able to do this. And then your market has to have the um, the rich spectrum in order to, for them to even offer those speeds to you. So in another video, you know, if you want to leave in the comment section down below your zip code and your area, I will break it down for you what cities and markets are able to get these gigabit speeds. Because you got to remember T-Mobile is one of the uh, lowest spectrum holders out of any carrier. Um, Sprint released an article about three to four days after T-Mobile's saying that they're also going to achieve the speeds and they are going to be able to and they're going to be able to do it in a lot more markets than T-Mobile is because they have more spectrum. So I think Sprint has six, at least 60 megahertz of band 41 in the top 100 markets. So they can almost achieve these speeds in all of their top mm -hmm. markets. T-Mobile can't. I can tell you that right now. T-Mobile is not going to be able to. Um, T-Mobile has, on, in most markets, T-Mobile has, I think, 40 megahertz dedicated to downlink only. I think my market has 50 and a couple of other markets. So definitely we'll uh, break that down for you guys in another video. Um, so some exciting stuff today. Um, you know, the... The Uncarry event wasn't mind blowing. It wasn't stuff that we, you know, that we haven't seen in the past. But it was very good. It's going to bring competition. Uh, it's going to force carriers to respond. So definitely, starting off the year right. Uh, definitely stay tuned to the channel. I have more coming for you guys uh, later on today. Some additional videos of AT and T. And then you know what they have planned um i didn't hear anything from sprint yet and i didn't hear anything from verizon yet so looking forward to that so definitely give this video a thumbs up it keeps me motivated keeps me going you know like share and subscribe this is tyron with tech life and i will see you guys in the next video peace